All right, everybody. Thank you for joining tonight. My name is Eric Eisenhut, and I'll be your facilitator um, this evening. With us, you have Mr. Jeff Tackett in California. You have John Schneider in Oregon and Russell Dishman out of Virginia. And I'll let them do their introductions in a moment. Tonight, we're here to speak to high school soccer, middle school soccer, and really compare it to your clubs, compare it to other experiences or no experiences at all. You know, maybe these are new to you and you're looking to learn more about them as well. So we're looking to set expectations. We're looking for parents to walk away with an understanding as to the level of play um, and compare the two and speak to what could potentially be offered from a coaching uh, position as well as competitiveness, et cetera. But I don't want to waste your time listening to me. I want you guys to get in front of and have these guys ask questions to you and vice versa. Please ask these guys as many questions as possible. So coaches, I'm just going to ask you, um, going starting at the top and working down in no particular order, just they were presented that way on the slide. So Mr. Jeff Tackett, if you could introduce yourself, please. Coach, I don't even see my name up there. Top one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Jeff Tackett. Nice to Nice to see everybody on here, and it's an honor to even be on this to be able to speak about this and hopefully educate some and maybe learn some from all the other the other coaches that are on here. So I'm excited. So I've been so coaching college for over 20 years, but I've been high school. I've been coaching also around 22, 23 years. I coach at Claremont High School, which is in Southern California, and I've been there pretty much the whole time. Um, I am the director of Southern California School of Goalkeeping, which is my, the Goalkeeping Academy, as well as I'm the director of coaches for Empire Soccer Club. So it'll be fun to get going and answer questions and see what we could do. So see you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, De Jeff. Coach Russ. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Russell Dishman. I'm uh, out of William Bird High School in uh, Roanoke, Virginia. I've uh, been coaching high school um, for pretty much about the last 23 years. Um, I'm also fortunate to be able to be a part of Roanoke College women's soccer. I was an assistant coach training the goalkeepers there, and as Eric has listed here, uh, part of the uh, East Region staff um, for ODP and part of Virginia and uh, Virginia ODP as well, and also a coaching education instructor uh, for grassroots courses and uh, also do a little bit of club, so uh, glad to be here. High school is very near and dear to my heart, uh, something I'm very passionate about. So I'm looking forward to a uh, good discussion here tonight and uh, being able to help in any way possible. Right on, Ross. Thank you, sir. Coach John. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Schneider. Uh, I'm in, from, in Eugene, Oregon now. Uh, I had lived in North Carolina for a few years, uh, originally from New York. Uh, so if you notice a funny accent, that's the New York side of me. Um, yeah, so I'm the uh, boys uh, high school, uh, boys goalkeeper coach at uh, Sheldon High School here in Eugene, um, and also the head goalkeeper coach at the club level on, for Eugene Timbers, and also uh, an assistant on Lane Community College. Um, don't have all, as much uh, experience as, as my uh, cohorts here at, at the high school game. Um, but definitely have experience through through my club experience uh, and through the years um, with with the high school high school or age kids and um, also you know being a parent of a couple of kids um, you know get, bring that perspective into it here so I'm excited to chat about this and 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 talk about the pros and cons of uh, high school and middle school soccer. Right on, Coach John. Thank you. Not listed here, but joining us tonight is Coach Paul Blodgett out of Jersey. Blodge, can you give a quick introduction, please? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, Paul Blodgett from Jersey. I uh, <laughs> came to Jersey as a goalkeeper coach, assistant coach for Rutgers men's program for over 20 years. Uh, in the last 14 years, I've been with the College of Jersey women's team. I just retired from that, although I'm still working six, seven days a week in my goalkeeper school. Um, I'm the technical director for goalkeeping for this uh, New Jersey Youth Soccer ODP program. And it's great to be with this group of fine young coaches here to help you all answer some questions. Right on. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Everybody, here's your agenda for today. Um, we're going to basically ask some questions regarding um, expectations in school sports and hearing from the coaches. Um, we'll speak to the high school soccer versus club. We'll get into level of play and the coaching because there, there can be potentially big differences there, or gaps. Um, we'll speak to life balance, <clears throat> soccer, school, you know, your life. There's a lot of things there, family. Uh, and lastly, we'll speak to the pride element um, and what that can mean <clears throat> all involved. <clears throat> so guys, let's, if I can, I'm just going to kind of lead this with, to the one of our, our presenting coaches, Coach Russ, if I could start with you, if that's okay. Yeah. Can you speak to, in your area, you come from Virginia, you know, it's a, it's a, pretty good soccer state you got some talent down there for sure can you speak to the differences between the uh, quality of play between club and school whether it's middle school or high school uh well all right so i mean looking at it i mean we have some some quality club programs and uh i, I would say that that is the higher standard between the two but i think that high school we have some very especially in my part southwestern part of the state uh we've had teams that are constantly in the final four uh, for the, the state high school championships as well. Um, so I, mean, I think there's a very good standard still. Um, but I think that, you know, as everybody kind of looks down on high school, I think there's a lot of good benefits. And uh, we have six different classifications in Virginia for high schools, um, the way they break down um, for the sizes. And each one has its benefits. And the, the standard uh, of play is, is a little bit different, but it's all quality all the way through. And I think, um, you know, it's always a little bit of an argument, but I think that the quality has been improving where we are. You look at certain areas of the state, it's, it's very good. Others, it's still growing. Um, but I think that's a, a big part that I think there is quality there. And uh, obviously, I think that uh, my area is, is getting better as well. Uh, Coach John, talk to me about Oregon and, your, and Eugene. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting here in Eugene. We, all, we have two clubs um, that are involved are in the area um most of them are at the eugene timbers um uh club and that's sort of where that the necessarily more of the higher level uh and competition is um and so within the schools in this area it, it, what i've seen happen is that it while it brings a lot of the kids from the clubs in into the schools um we're also seeing a lot of kids that aren't participating in either of the bigger clubs they um they may be playing you know just maybe it's socially uh we have a lot of different um yeah. economic and, and cultural differences within in the community of eugene and we're seeing that at the school level so i think you know some kids sure. maybe not able to to pay to play and but are given that opportunity within the schools um so there, there's a, it's a big difference between, uh, so I think uh, Russ mentioned, I think he said there were six, I believe there's four different levels here in Oregon um, of, of schools based off the size of the schools. And so um, I have my, my son plays at the, the second tier. Um, I coach at uh, Sheldon, which is in the, in the top tier with the bigger schools. Um, so they, are, they have a number of different uh, levels. So they have varsity uh, JV and then some schools have a, a JV two um, that allows more kids to play. It's just you know the number of, of kids, um, but that range of play uh, within the school is is pretty. It's pretty wide um, from really some some of the top kids that are playing really competitively and to kids that are essentially just playing recreationally. Uh, so it's a really interesting. Uh, dynamic that that it presents itself with yeah coach coach jeff i want to throw this one at you um they, they both mentioned different divisions within their um, high school and and here in western pa i believe it's four um it goes one two three four abcd for whatever that is but it goes only think four divisions in soccer um you're kind of forced into your own division when, when you go to a school whereas with the league you can kind of or with a club you can join a club in a particular league so the both of them have very different pool of players to select from. What's that like in uh, in Southern California? We had the well, first of the our divisions. We actually have, I believe, seven divisions now. I mean, for ours in our in Southern California, so for high school, 
Uh, competitive wise, obviously the the club is still definitely trumps everything. Where it's very competitive because we have so many leagues there, and we're saturated with saturated with clubs out here. But I think what is interesting that they've just done the last couple of years, you just brought up how you know you're kind of stuck in the division. Actually, out here they they've changed it in the last two years where it's you you do get certain points like longo points kind of like college say so you get points a ranking system for who you play how you well you do in league where you rank in league or your standings in league and then how you do in the the playoffs the cif i don't know if everybody's called cif i apologize if that's not but is that across the board i'm not sure i think that's just a california <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so, but keep going. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just I didn't want to throw out the acronyms and then everybody's looking at me crazy like they don't know what that is. So that would be basically our playoffs. So the higher, the farther you get in our playoffs, and if you win the whole entire state, you get more points. So technically, if you were a division four school, you could become a division three next year and continue up, and vice versa. If your your points are lower, you actually start to drop and get relegated. So in in Parts of that, that's kind of cool for me to see because they are trying to actually show that, hey, if we could get the club players to play more and get to the point where we, we could have a better product, then you're not going to stay in that lower division and, and think that you're playing against lower players. You're actually going to bump up. So, yes. so that's kind of a, a very cool thing that we are, we are doing out here right now. So. so, Jeff, that's the high school system you were just talking about? And that is our high school system, yes. So there's a regulation and all that, that whole process. To, that's an interesting thing. I've honestly never heard of that in the high school, in the high school level. Everything that I've heard revolves around population. Right. It's always been, but yeah, they just started this two years ago and it was, it was exciting. I, at first I was kind of like, ah, oh, what is this? But I like it. It is kind of, it gives people a little carrot that they can push. To yeah. And actually it's going to lead me to the next question, which kind of gets into, you know, there are clubs out there that ask kids not to play high school and represent their community and, and just stick with the club. Um, thoughts on that? Do you guys see that? Blige, what about in Jersey? Very competitive market as well, soccer market. Yeah, extremely competitive. The uh, uh, Like Jeff said, the uh, club scene is saturated. Um, and when the ECNL came into existence, um, one of the things that they... All the way up. Yeah, one of the things that they kind of made a rule of is if you play for ECNL, you can't play for high school. And uh, what we found here in Jersey on the boys' side, that doesn't really make a difference because usually with the ECNL, you're, you're aligned with like a Red Bull or Philadelphia Union or something like that. Uh, so the kids want to be in the club that's aligned with one of those teams, hopefully to get their look to advance and get into the programs and the pros. Uh, the girls' side, however, it was a big to do. The girls did not want to miss the high school experience. So um, it, it actually got to a point where uh, ECNL teams uh, started backing out of the requirement uh, of not being able to play for your school. So what's happened, like I'm with PDA now in Jersey and with goalkeeping. And um, who's that? Who's talking? Lodge from Jersey. Uh, the, the guy oh. from ODP, the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, so knows. you know, you were not on mute, but we appreciate that. Paul Blodgett from Jersey. Yes, sir. Keep going, Paul. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, so the, the girls demanded to play in high school, basically. So a lot of the big club teams, I know Mass big team Massachusetts, I think one of the ones in Michigan, uh, and, and obviously uh, PDA in Jersey all backed out of the requirement that you cannot play high school. So what we're doing now is like well, it, certain teams are training, like the younger kids are training right now and the kids are playing their high school ball. And then when the high school is done, then everything kicks in, which is generally probably around late October, first, early November, depending when the, the tournaments are. But that's kind of the structure there. Um, uh, but the high school, uh, I have to say that it's extremely competitive, both high school and in the club scene. And um uh, the teams, for the high school soccer here is very good. And the club team soccer here is, is quite good too, is very good. So uh, the kids have a lot of choices, that's for sure. But you got a lot of kids here too. And in 2002, when I decided to start my goalkeeper school, I based it off a article in the Star Ledger, which is a major paper here in the state. 
And they said at the time in 2002, there were 175,000 registered kids between the ages of eight to 18 playing soccer, youth soccer. Now that did not even touch the recreational league. So um, when I saw those numbers, I said, well, one every, every 11 has got to be a goalkeeper. There's 15, 18,000 goalkeepers running around the state and I know they're not getting trained. So that's why I started my school. But that just shows you that's what it was like in 2002. Now you got clubs popping up all over the place, new leagues I'm popping up all over the place. It's, it's actually quite confusing to be very honest with you. So, yeah. But the high school experience is big and the club experience is big here in Jersey. Do you guys run into situations or have you seen situations where your um, your club has have asked players not to play high school and just That's dedicate awesome. themselves to club? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll take it right. I've heard where it's happened. And I mean, having worked within a club with, within the different clubs in my area and um, obviously coaching high school, I know that the conversation, whether uh, it's admitted or not, that that does come up for some kids sometimes depending on their school. And I know some high schools try to get the kids maybe not to do certain commitments for their club that may be in part of the conflicting seasons. Um, I think it happens, but I think uh, communication usually kind of prevents any of the problems and even issues where people think there's going to be an issue, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like we have uh, one of our local clubs here is going uh, doing the USL Academy and they train and it kind of, goes during our spring season in the high school. And I mean, we don't start, Virginia doesn't do spring sports starting until February 20th. That's the first official day. Um, and we don't start matches because we're spring, uh, spring sport for soccer for boys and girls. Uh, first match is uh, 13th or 14th of March. I'm already working with the area clubs, just talking like, hey, here's my high school schedule. AED's on board. That way everybody's kind of up front and I avoid a lot of those conflicts. And I think that's something that, you know, I think there was a little bit of a time that people didn't want them to, but now I think it's a little more open here uh, about the the communication and working together. Russ, is that is that something that you as a, as a, did you self start on that one, or is that something that's being re- recommended to to the to everybody? How's that working out there? I self started a little bit because I, I you kind of knew it was coming as, as Paul was talking with where ECNL did things like that, and the DA uh, did, and and where we are in Southwestern Virginia, it was a little bit we didn't have the DA come in and ECNL is just now uh, being something right here, but knowing those things were going, being involved in club soccer and then high school, I kind of started, but then trying to talk to the other high school coaches and giving them a heads up and just let them know that it doesn't have to be adversarial. And then working within the clubs, it made it a little bit easier. Um, And working with a lot of the area high school uh, goalkeepers, uh, it was one thing teaching them to advocate a little bit and as they were kind of, being a little more proactive i think everybody started getting on board a little bit now we have more high school coaches that are also club coaches yeah we see we see that around here we that western pa which is going to bring me to the next point here <clears throat> continuing with the coaching team um level of coaching um knowing the three of you four of you blige including you know anyone who has you as their coach is blessed we also know is very diverse right um because well, I'm not even going to get the because. I'll let you handle the because. Um, let's talk about that. And I'll just oh. say, because why? <laughs> why Why is there such a diverse um, difference? And talk about the differences between club and high school, um, middle school soccer. Um, help I me can, with that. I can take them and I can just put it on the Wi-Fi. I, oh, I think someone, you might not be, you might not be on mute there. Talk about the coaching disparities. Who wants to start with that one, please? Yeah, I, I'll jump in there. You know, I think that a lot of schools, uh, it becomes a budgetary thing. And, you know, if if somebody's willing to step up and volunteer, maybe you get somebody that's uh, a licensed coach and, and you get lucky in that regard. Um, or if you have a licensed coach that's also a teacher and that wants to get some uh, extra uh, cash or, or, or do it voluntarily or however that works. Um, I think you get that. Um, but in, in the Eugene area, we we're a relatively small community uh, that we, there's a lot of the club coaches that are um, 
get involved in the high school uh, side as well, um, which I think is is pretty good. Um, I do, uh, I don't know too many you know uh, gym teachers now that are just just be our our uh, coaches because they're they're they have some free time. Um, so pretty much for you know I probably. A good, good percentage. We, there's some experience in there. I don't know. It, and we also have some colleges in the area too that are we're able to to grab from and, and get some younger coaches that uh, you know maybe are learning the ropes some more, but bring a good culture and bring um, a good perspective to it as well. Um, so you know, one of the things that I think that's important for we're for this this group is you know what else. In, in addition to the soccer, it's such a small, compact season that there's a lot, there's not a lot of technical training going on in these uh, uh, seasons, um, but the, the, the social and the, the, um, the culture that's, that they're providing um, can be more and more important than, than the soccer skills that they're learning, that these kids are learning too. So that's what I've seen so far. Yeah. John, I love how you brought in some of the different um, developmental aspects of, of anything. You know, the, the, you brought in the tactical component. You brought in the, you know, you, 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 the social component. Um, and, and around that stuff, coaches, what should parents expect out of their high school coach? I think, oh. As John just said, it might not be the technical side. Oh. Uh, well, I do want to say – especially in like in our, in my area over here, it's, I think we still have, or somebody was saying it earlier, that they they're still have the, the club pushback of going and playing high school because they feel that the, the level of coaching is not there. But I think nowadays, I mean, that for here, I'll speak for in the Southern California, maybe 15 years ago, that was still true. I think now it's still just a blanket statement and it's almost to the point of, people still say that teachers are the coaches out there and there's not real coaching going on in high school versus the club. But I know just in my, our league and itself, I think every, every coach is a club coach for our league, as well as six of our teams, five of the coaches also coach college at some aspects. So at that point, you know, you're looking at what we, we tend to say is, the high school season and the high school play almost mimics as close Not as you're going to get to Oh, wait, that's Jeff? Oh, Greg has talking. Mm -hmm. But um, the, I think, yeah, it's, it gets to the point almost it, the, the college season because of how short it is and it's comparable to the, to the high school season. It is almost the, that style of play and everything mimics it. And so when these kids are, are coming into a high school atmosphere, they have to be possibly making the team like a college. They have to be going to school like at a college. They're, they're there five days a week going to school like a college. And then they're training every day. So we, we try to push and say that, you know, you're in an environment that you're getting well coached as well as you're being ran as a program, which you're going to possibly see when you play into a next level. Because we do have a weight room. We can We make them do the weight room. We make them do they watch game film after their game. So there's everything that is there is its own little mini college type atmosphere. So it's like I said, it's for us, we hear people still state that, hey, don't go play high school because it's for lack of better words, crap. And, but most of the kids love it and want to play it. And the coaching is, is warranted and it's, it's a, it's a good place to go. So it's, we're hoping that the DA kind of push that to make obviously no one can play but I, now that that's gone we don't have i know the mls next we have now and if you're a, one of the pro clubs then you're still not going to be playing high school but other than that our ecnls do not push for that um like i was sharing with you guys earlier i don't know if i think southern california club shuts down when high school starts so right now club is going on until november and at thanksgiving club will shut down for high school age and then the high school age kids play until February only high school so it's a little bit different so 
Hopefully I didn't go off on a tangent. Sorry about that. Coach. No, honestly, very advanced and a lot of things I've never heard of at the high school level. So it, it, with that and the point system for your leagues, to me, that's that's a learning point for me in Southern California. Russ, we've heard of two totally diverse answers here. Potentially a teacher who just looking for some extra cash to someone who's a college coach. What's Virginia like? Um, I mean, I, I think a lot of my friends that I mean I, I do club with and going, I mean, they they do both club and high school. They, they kind of get in and they're doing both. It's a great opportunity to coach. I think some people see a great advantage in uh, being able to kind of see a different environment. Um, I know for my area here, uh, I guess because I'm getting a little bit older, I've coached some of the uh, my my opposition coaches in the area. And uh, as, as you've got the part, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but the uh, coaches being licensed. Um, uh, most all the coaches through the area have at least their grassroots or D um, license. Uh, they're pursuing some coaching education. Um, they're going through it and, and they're constantly trying to, to better themselves. Uh, we, we have both. Now, there, and that's not to say there are some places that maybe they had trouble finding. Uh, here we're having trouble finding coaches for a lot of sports. Um, Soccer is no exception. Um, but I, I do think the standard's better um, than what it may have used to been like when I was in high school um, overall. But we have we've got quality and everybody's involved and, and want to make the game better. Um, so I, mean, I, I think it's, it's improving. And I think, like I said, there are coaches that do this year round now. Uh, part of us that are doing college as well as club with high school. Uh, I've got friends that are coaching college and they they're part of middle school teams. I mean, it's all it's all trying to make the game better and trying to grow the game. So, I mean, there's a lot more buy in on the the coaching side and parents hopefully see that as well. Lodge, do you need coaching licenses to coach in Jersey high school? Paul, Coach Paul. Yeah, sorry. I was trying to work the mute button here. Uh, Yeah. They, they, they strongly encourage it. Uh, I do have to say, I think the level of coaching in Jersey at the club level and the high school level is quite good. Uh, and I think because it is so competitive here uh, that people go get their licenses. Uh, I know New Jersey U soccer is very active in uh, all the coaching levels, grassroots all the way up. And they're running license courses all the time. And um, so the it, it's uh, and, and the numbers are are, are pretty exceptional. With these you know, people going after their licenses, um, but the uh, you still the, the problem I see in, in reference to what we do as goalkeeper coaches that's where it's tremendously lacking. Uh, high schools don't have goalkeeper coaches. Probably eighty percent of them don't. Uh, club coaches do have quote unquote, goalkeeper coaches, um, but what level of experience are they? Um, are they just kids out of college? Are they teachers or are they just trainers? Uh, those, those things come into play uh, at the club level very heavily. And um, uh, that's to me, I don't, I don't think overall, we got a lot of good, very good goalkeeper coaches now here in the state. I'll, I'll tell you that, but I don't think we have enough of those coaches to match uh, the number of clubs that we have and the level of clubs that we have, and definitely not in high school. Very rarely you're going to see a, uh, you're going to see somebody doing being a goalkeeper coach in, in the high school level. So from our perspective, uh, it, it still needs a lot of work. Um, but as far as the coaches themselves, the teams, uh, some of these guys have been with the high schools for decades. For crying out loud, I mean the programs that we have are here are very. Uh, some of them are, ver- are very historical and. Um, uh, the, the coaches get involved and they just stay with the schools and, until they pass away or, uh, or, or, you know, they just retire from everything. But um, uh, the club coaches, we find a lot of club coaches now, too, are taking part in high schools, which is good. So uh, the level is pretty good. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Can I just ask a question of this, of this group? Absolutely. Does any of the other states, uh, so in Oregon, it's the coaches are limited to own – essentially not being able to coach kids at the club level, the same kids within high school. So they can only have, I think, I forget what the number is. They changed everyone's mind, but I think it's two. They can coach no more than two kids at the club level uh, that they coach in high school. So what that ends up doing is that 
you have some good coaches, but they stop coaching them at once they're at the club level, once they hit high school, because they're going to, they're going to be high school coaches. And so they can't coach the same kids. And so it sort of limits like all the same club kids moving to, to a high school. I was curious if that was the case in other places as well, or if it's just an Oregon thing. In Jersey, it's not. I mean, uh, high school coaches, club coaches, they're coaching many of the same kids. Uh, okay. So yeah, we have that. We don't have that here. I know. I, I know people who um, <clears throat> they own clubs, and they're also the high school coach in the exact location of the club. <laughs> <laughs> right think think about that like oh my god i have to play at this club if i'm a kid right like but that's i've, I've seen it in a couple I, I unfortunately see that a couple places here in western pa it's interesting um parents i want to turn this over to you um based on everything we've spoken about on the agenda items that you see on the screen stories questions comments surprises not surprises This is Eric. Can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead, Eric. Okay. So I'm kind of curious when I listen to the club versus high school. Um, what what's really driving the hey you have to play club or you have to play high school? Um, because you know, you see you look at football and maybe other sports where you don't see that kind of division to clubs uh, maybe as much as you are in, in soccer currently. And maybe it's out there. I just, my kids don't play other sports. So I don't, I don't know that you know, maybe there's a, another club driving, you know, basketball, for example. I know there's prep schools and other things, but what, what's driving that current split? Coaches? I think the fact around here, one of the things, or at least areas that I've been associated with, is sometimes they're conflicting seasons. Um, or there's a little bit of overlap. Uh, you know, most of our club stuff here in Virginia is in the fall, high schools in the spring, but a lot of things come there, spring tournaments. Um, there are things that are, are big events and showcases where teams will go. And I think it's, it's always a concern that you're going to lose them for an activity, uh, something along those lines. I think that, that's something I've seen a lot of and um, that you're, you're, the kid may have to split time. Um, you know, that, I think that's one of the issues we run into or have run into previously. <clears throat> you know, from my perspective, um, it's the fear of injury and being not able to participate in the club season. Um, and also the overall load of work within uh, for the high school season compared to a club season where, you know, typically you're training a few days a week, games on the weekends. At the high school level, it's train two games a week for two, three months at a time. And then, you know, we, we're, we're lucky enough here that there is a break. They, they, they will, we'll, we'll stop club right around the high, beginning of the school season. And then uh, the club season will start pretty much the week after high school season ends. Um, and that's just a lot on these high school kids that just that there's a lot of um, time and energy and just a lot of stress for a condensed period of time. And so that, that's a that's a big concern. And, and just because of the different levels of play here and the different styles, you know, it, at the club level, we sort of talk about the same style of play and, and um, it's just not not necessarily the same at all the at all the, the high schools that that are in the area. So sort of a relearning piece. So I think there's a there's two sides to that: the physical side of it, and then the tactical side of of the game that has to get relearned after a, a couple of months off. Nice, thank you, John. <clears throat> thank you, coaches. Yep, Eric. Thank you. Appreciate that. Others. Seems like um, kids being um, more of a multi, playing multiple sports is becoming more important 
Simpson Club kind of prevents um, the ability to play different sports, you know, and my kid doesn't play club, so I don't I, like, so I don't really have the experience on it, but just hearing these conversations, it seems like that's a really big commitment if you play for a club versus a school team. Coaches? Yeah, I, I, I uh, that's definitely the way that, the stress of these kids to play either club or high school um, is difficult on the kids, I think. And they are pressured uh, once if they are in a club, the club seems to try to take precedent over everything else. Um, and it's a delicate balance. I, I don't know if it was John was talking, uh, but they have how, how they have different seasons at different times. Um, these kids in Jersey, they go from high school, you know, they start in August with the captain's practices and all, then they have their season in the fall, goes into November, and then they're super heavy into the club season. Uh, and that runs all the way until, what, July, for crying out loud, you know? And, and, um, and the, 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 the clubs seem to put more pressure on the fact to get these kids to stay involved because their season is longer. Um, it carries from, like I said, like uh, November all the way down into the, in the summertime. The other problem I see with the club thing is, is, uh, just a multitude of, of leagues. I mean, everybody asks me about this league or that league. And I gotta be honest with you guys. I have, I can't keep up with it. I mean, we have certain people here that have created a league that somehow got all of the teams to get involved with it. And, it seems to take precedence now over other competitions. And uh, this person who got this league going did a very good job of marketing, obviously, but he also got all the college coaches to be able to get there. So I know with the ODP program, uh, we, we have certain sanctioned games that we play against, uh, you know, Eastern region teams. And uh, some of these kids can't make the ODP thing because their club coaches have signed them on to these other uh, tournaments, college showcase things, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, uh, the the pressures on the club side is, is way heavier than it is in high school. The high school is, is the old rah rah loyalty. <clears throat> my school, my town's better than your town type of thing, you know. And and it's a very to me, it's a very refreshing type of competition um, because that's what I grew up with. I didn't replay really soccer until I was twenty five. So, but. It was all, I was a basketball player and it was all that. I mean, your team, your school against another school and um, uh, the, the amount of pride in that was phenomenal. Uh, when I came to Jersey, it, just, it completely blew my mind because first of all, we are the most densely populated state in the nation. And, uh, you know, we're not that big of a state. So we have so many people, so many kids playing that there are so many different levels of club teams and high school teams and leagues and everything else that, uh, I actually pity parents sometimes because, uh, I mean, their heads are spinning. What do I do? Which, which way do I go? How do I get the exposure for my kid? You know, are they going to get the looks for colleges if that's the path they want to go to? Are they just going to have a playing experience? You know, it's not, a lot of these kids don't want to go on and play in college. They just want to play. But the competition is, okay, if you're going to play, well, you've got to absorb yourself uh, into everything that we do or else go somewhere else, basically. You know, so I, um, I'm not a real fan of the setup, um, to me because it's a big, well, let's be honest. It's a big money-making venture. Um, these, these club teams, these leagues, it's all about money. And I don't, I'd be honest with you, I don't know how your parents do it. I mean, uh, number one, shuffling your kids around between high school, then getting the clubs and everything else. And then on the road weekend upon weekend, which can't be a cheap venture, and, um, uh, you know, it shows a lot of dedication on your parts. And I, actually, a lot of parents make their whole social lives for like the first 18 years or, or, you know, the first how many years of their child's life because it's all soccer every weekend. So now they have their social circles within the soccer and that seems to become their lives. Because I know a lot of parents who, after their kids are done out of college, they don't know what to do. It's like now they're empty nesters and they're going, they're going crazy. So what do we do? So it's, it's a whole social thing. Um, you know, and um, uh, I guess the, the, the money-making people who put it all together that way are sitting around think, feeling pretty good because they're making a lot of money out of it. But 
what are they doing to the kids? What are they doing to the families? What are the pressures they doing on uh, getting these people to have, forcing them to, to have to take part in all these activities when um, the kids are burnt out in a lot of cases, you know? Uh, so I, 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 that's a, kind of a problem I see. Blodge, you just hit every single agenda point on this slide. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool, he says. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> And, and honestly, I, I was going to turn this slide literally over to the parents um, and ask them, based on what you see here, you know, what what is your experience and, and, and what would you like to know if you don't know anything about this experience? Because Blodge, I feel, hit it on the head, to be perfectly honest with you. And there, and there is a lot of a financial impact to, to club soccer and, and compared to high school soccer or recreation. So I want to turn it over to parents and, and ask, you know, based on what you read here and the questions that might come up based on also what Coach Blodge just said or Coach Paul just said, what is um what's your take? What do you have? What do you comments, questions? I just worry, how do you know if you were to play for a club, if they're they're looking out for the best interest of your child or looking out for your for the money that they're taking out of my wallet? I'd like to speak on that if I could get started, you guys. <laughs> well, keep going, baby. Keep going. <laughs> you invited me on the call. I know. The, what a uh, mistake that was. I mean, <laughs> my, I'm on mute, right? The um, uh, Okay, do me a favor. Ask the question again. <laughs> how, how do you know? know if, how do you go know ahead, if I'm looking out for the best interests of my child or <laughs> looking out for my wallet? Yeah, well, uh, it, it's I'm sure it's not 50 50. Um, the, um, the 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 problem is, is they're so competitive. I don't know what it's like. Where are you from? Uh, Pittsburgh, PA. OK. All right. You Eric's neighbor. I apologize. Oh, for that. <laughs> my, the, son um, goes, my son goes uh, out there. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, um, uh, it, it, the thing is, it's so competitive here in Jersey. And I'm not sure the way it is in other states, but it's so competitive here that it is a fight for money. It is a monetary fight. Um, some of these clubs are, are charging $3,500 just to be in a club. And then the travel expenses, I mean, it, it's got to be $15,000 over the year. It has to be. I mean, with pl flights, rooms, uh, the number of tournaments they have to go to. So what you need to do what I suggest you do and I, is that you got to get kind of, you got to really delve into and study the environment your child might be entering. Um, get, find out the pedigree of the club. Find out the pedigree of the coaches. Um, uh, do the coaches bounce around all the time? Do they get a coach in there for a year or two and they're gone? Uh, in other words, they're a big turnover. Why is there a turnover? Um, how is the marketing of the club? Do they offer things like, uh, uh, you know, help you out with college selection? Do they give you good gear? Do they uh, give you good uh, uh, exposure and experiences outside of this technical training? Um, I think you could probably, if you know anything about the game and you go to club games and you watch the coaches and you see what they're doing tactically, if they're, if they're inept, the, the kids aren't going to learn. See, to me, the, to me, the whole thing, whether you're going to play club ball, whether you're going to play middle school, whether you go high, doesn't matter. You want to play because you want to have fun and enjoy the game. So you need to make kind of do your due diligence as a parent to see what are the educators like? Are they going to teach your kids something? Ask questions amongst other parents. I mean, you're having honest conversations. It's not like you're going behind people's back and doing anything um, because it is a commitment on your part as well as your, as your child's. And you, as a parent, I'm sure, want your child to have the best and most fulfilling, fulfilling experience that they can have, whether they're going to be a college uh, player or not. I always tell kids, I don't care if you're going to be a Division One player, Division Two, college player, club player. I don't care. I just want you to to understand and reach your potential as a player, whatever level that's going to be. So you as a parent are going to have to kind of work with your kid to understand what your child wants to do. What level do they want to get to? Um, do they want to play in college? If that is so, then you're going to have to direct yourself towards some type of club where it's going to have a better pedigree of, of coaching. And um, you can ask. I mean, when you go into a club, ask who has licenses here? 
Any of your coaches have or what the coaches have licensing or don't they have it? If they don't have it, then you're going to kind of know that maybe the educational component uh, of developing your child is not going to be there. Okay. So as, as parents, I know parents and coaches and clubs, sometimes they say, listen, I don't want to talk to you. You know, we have a certain protocol for directing questions and everything else. Don't let that discourage you from trying to find out what you want to know. You know, I mean, I always say the same thing when kids are, and the parents are looking for colleges for their kids. I said, you got to ask the real questions. You can't go in there and just listen to the, to the program, expound what they know, what they, they, how their marketing is to, to get you to come on their side without you walking away. And if you're walking away or you're not satisfied with everything, then the, your job wasn't done in asking questions. And to me, they were just giving you a snow job. Blodge, I, yeah. I was just going to say, don't believe the social media hype. Just yeah. because they have a good marketer or just because they have a good Instagram presence or whatever, don't take that for the quality of the club. Yeah. You know, you to, to me, it. yeah, yeah. To me, you know, the, you, at, you as parents, you got to do your diligence, your due diligence, yep. research, and then ask questions. Yeah. And uh, you will become educated. You're all, you're all smart people. No, you, you develop, you bring up kids. So, you know, you have to do your job to make sure that you're given, find the best opportunities for your child. Yeah. And, I, and I'd say this, I'd add to this and say, you know what, you're the paying customer. You know, whether, if you're buying a car, you go back there with a problem with the car, you go right back to them saying, hey, man, what's up with this engine? Blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm exaggerating and comparing it to something that orange and then apples <laughs> here. But at the same time, you are the paying customer. Do your due diligence. And I, I agree 100% with Paul. Coaches, anything you want to add? Parents, add. Keep going with this conversation. I, I appreciate the um, the different avenues we're going we're going into. I have a concern about high school versus club, and my concern stems more from whether there's opportunities as much in high school with four years of age differences, and you have a goalkeeper, so this is a unique position. So now, instead of just having one age group where your child is the only goalie. Um, now we are talking about four years of people that they're going to have to compete with for a spot and potentially get less play time. Is that something that would factor into a decision for you guys for club versus high school? No, I, I would, um, I, 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 you can see it two different ways. I think um, I, I look at it as, yeah, the depending on the, the level of the player, maybe that's what they need as a challenge. Um, I personally, at uh, our high school here, uh, I have a freshman that's starting our starting goalkeeper because I, I think he's one of the better goalkeepers around. Um, and, you know, and he's up to the challenge. Um, and, I, you know, within the, within the school environment too, there are, you know, with there's varsity, there's JV, there's, you know, freshman teams or JV2 teams. Um, I think there that you can find that happy medium of finding the right place for your child and competing at a at the right competitive level, um, but also offering that opportunity of seeing what it takes to get to that next level by seeing some kids that are more mature. Because yeah, you know, you see a 17-year-old uh, boy who looks older than me. Uh, going against your 13 year old, 14 year old kid, it's terrifying. And, you know, maybe in that environment, it's, it's not, not ideal, but, you know, a year or two, that's, that's where gonna, they're going to be um, given that they, uh, you know, hopefully that there's, there's enough opportunities that it's not just a one size fits all school that it's varsity and, and yeah, you're going to have four years of difference, but I see kids, freshman kids compete really, really well uh, at the varsity level against kids that are older than them because they, they're a little more mature and they're ready for it. But for those kids that aren't, there's a, there's a spot for them too. And it's, that's nothing against the kid or the school. That's just, you know, it's, that's human nature, right? Like we uh, just got to accept that kids develop at different times. And, you know, this, it takes, we, we're throwing in different ages in there. I think, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. John, I think, uh, first of all, John, I applaud you for the fact if you have a freshman, it's exceptional. You're going to play him at the high school level. Um, too many times I see very, very good freshman, sophomore 
goalkeepers that will not play because their coach always is going to play the senior. Um, so parents, I think you got to understand, and this is where it comes like little research again, you know, uh, first of all, it, just to have one goalkeeper on a team only for the high school level or only for the club team level does nothing for the kid. As far as I'm concerned, we have to compete. Goalkeepers have to compete for the job. They have to learn how to win the job and they have to learn how to keep the job once they get it. And they got to realize that they do get the job and lose it. How do they handle that? That's all part of the process of the growth and development of the, of the number, not, not only the person, but a, as the goalkeeper, as the athlete. So uh, I don't like the situation where you have an outstanding freshman and they're not allowed to be the varsity goalkeeper because the varsity goalkeeper is a senior. And then sometimes you have to run into things where you have parents who are on the board and you play my kid or I'm going to get you fired. You know, you run into those types of things too. So the political aspect of everything, I hate it. And it, it does, it, the only thing it, it uh, hurts is the kids. So you need to be aware of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can answer the questions to your, your child when they're, they're not starting, they're not playing, when they know they're better. So you have to be able to understand, well, this is the way this, this particular school is. Well, if that's the way it is, then the club team is going to be a better environment for them. Mm -hmm. Because one thing you all got to understand is parents, the kids have to play. You know, when you're, when you're younger and you're in your technical development, the stress is on the technical development, and then you get into games and have fun. Well, when you get up and like now you're in high school, you got to start playing because that's your education now. You apply your technical work and you now have to apply that into the tactical aspects of the game. So you start learning the game because if you don't learn the game, you go into a college environment. Now you might be technically good, but if you have not learned the game over the course of the high school, because you haven't played, then you get into competitive at the uh, collegiate level where it's going to be competitive and people fighting for the job. You're going to kind of be on the losing end. So that's another factor you have to take into consideration. Is your child getting playing time? If they're at the ECNL club, for example, and they're the number three, the number one, number two are getting all the games. The number three is a training goalkeeper and every once in a while they get thrown into a match. What is that doing for your child? Is it because of the prestige that you're with an ECNL club or a high level club? Maybe. Okay. But what is that doing for them? Are they enjoying the game? If they, if they don't mind it and they're having a social aspect of it, they don't really care to go on and play at a different level. Okay. Maybe that's a good fit, but if they want to play and they're in a club because they think they're going to get the exposure at, at college showcases and all this stuff, but they don't get in and get games. That's a problem. So, uh, you know, you have, once again, you got to do your due diligence as a parent to make sure that you understand the high school environment, the club environment so you can make better decisions for the whole family. Well said. Coach Russ, Coach Jeff. I mean, that was, I mean, he pretty much took it all. So <laughs> yeah, your, quality your, info there. All your question was answered. Yeah. That's that was the only thing that the end is making sure, especially as the goalkeepers, like out here we see it where the, the clubs are so good and and so the freshman goalkeeper is mad because they don't play varsity or some freshman goalkeepers want to just play varsity but they're the third string and they're not playing so I've always pushed and told them my goalkeepers at my my high school that if you're going to be the third I'm going to put you at JV just so at least you're playing because you're going to get to play two games a week for the next three months and how great is that you're able to put yourself in a different environment and different style many of these many of these goalkeepers go into a place where their 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 back four are so great in front of them as a club now they actually have to communicate they have to see things differently um they have to really play differently and so it's a it's a great environment for them to even if they aren't varsity and it's all about the status right but if they're able just to play as a jv or freshman keeper so it's it's just, it's the way it's worded. And sometimes they, they buy into it. Other times they don't want to hear it because all their other club teams are on varsity and they're only a freshman or sophomore, but that's the unfortunate part of the goalkeeping. There's only one position, right? So. Yeah. Coach Russ. Uh, I agree with all that. And I mean, like I said, tell the kids if 
you know, varsity or JV, whatever, it's all about playing. I mean, they've got to get minutes. They've got to be in there. They've got to see it. Um, and, and sometimes it's tough. Sometimes uh, it's frustrating. I mean, I know, you know, if, if there's an unfortunate year where they both of them have to be on varsity because of the uh, what grade they're in, um, it's tough. But usually we try to communicate early. Like, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of splitting games, you know, first half, second half. But sometimes we talk about, you know, kids getting a chance and, and making sure that we find time to get them in a game. Um, you know, we want to get them time, but that's something that we communicate. And I think that's something important that should be expected, whether it's club or high school, that coaches communicate with the players. You know, we, we talk about what their their strengths or weaknesses, what can we work on, how can we make them better. If you're the number two, what do you need to work on to kind of push the number one? If you're the number one, don't get comfortable. That other person's chasing you. And sometimes being the number two, you're one moment away from having to be thrown in as the number as, as the starter. And that's that's an important thing to learn, you know, for soccer, but also just a life lesson. You know, you may think that you're the one that's just kind of, you know, I'm, you know, uh, just sitting here. I'm, I'm not even going to need to get my gloves out of the bag. And then uh, here it is. All of a sudden you're thrown in on a penalty at a really important moment in the game because something happened and all of a sudden you're the one throwing, you've got to be ready. And, and that's sometimes a hard thing, but I think that's something that needs to be communicated. Um, as coaches, we need to be very honest. The players and parents need to be honest and open and, and listen as we talk about with coaches. And if it doesn't make sense, ask. It doesn't, it's not personal, you know, I, you know, and that's one thing some parents think that are, are players or, People think that, you know, oh, I can't believe they did this. I don't get up in the morning thinking I just want to make this challenging on my players. I want to find a way to make this as enjoyable as possible and a great experience that they give back to the game the same way the game gives. And and it's tough, but that's, you know, that's the big part is communicate and always be ready. <clears throat> I love that. I really do. I, I couldn't support what you just said there anymore. Nice job, Russ. <clears throat> um. Parents, last opportunity for questions with these four coaches. We covered a lot on this page, and I feel this page, to me, is the biggest piece. The other piece is understanding what it is you're researching and looking into, um, and here's the actual application and what you get out of it. And I feel there's a lot of pride in high school. I, I do appreciate the rivalries of the beating the town next door. I think that's a lot of fun. I always say, for those of you that train with me, no, it's always best beating a friend. Nothing's better than beating a friend. <laughs> now that said, um, you know, there is a social impact to it, but we've covered a lot and I, and I, and I know that. So parents last opportunity, if you want to ask a question to these four coaches, it's all yours. Hey, good evening coaches. Uh, this is Chris Stevens out of running Virginia. Um, I was just curious. Um, I know various clubs around my area um, kind of had different perspectives on letting their, uh, head coach be the parent of a player on the team. I was just curious what um, other clubs throughout the country, if that's kind of a unwritten rule or whether y'all also have something like that. I can give my take, Chris. I mean, I know we just saw each other train a little bit ago, um, but uh I think sometimes there is uh, a rule sometimes to try to avoid. I mean, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest right here in front of everybody. I mean, I'm coaching uh, my son on the, a, a young team, my 10 year old son on there. Um, and part of me loves that. I love every minute of being able to be part of it with him. There's another part of me that wants to be in a camping chair, being able to cheer him on and not have to be the one uh, having some of those talks. Um, I think it's a delicate thing because there there's good and bad parts of, of a parent coaching. I think one thing with clubs, uh, one thing that a lot, at least that I've been involved in, some of my friends who are involved, they try to rotate coaches so you're not with the team for an extended period of time, so that way it changes up. Um, I, I personally think two or three years with the group sometimes gets a little, you need to change it up. Um, and so a parent doesn't need to stay with them too long. Um, I think it's about the, who the parent is as well. I mean, so there are some quality coaches um, and, you know, they, that's nothing wrong with them coaching their kid and they balance it. Um, I think sometimes it's, it's a necessity thing. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a, a solid rule on it, 
but I'm interested to get the other coaches from all over the place with it. But, you know, I, I, I kind of think that is a delicate balance. And, and I, I fear even now with my 10 year old that maybe am I, am I hurting certain things? Am I not, I, I try to make so be so sure that I'm not showing anything to him. Sometimes it takes away. Um, and I, and I worry about that. And I ask my, I ask my wife about that after things that, that I handle this. Okay. Is everything going? And, and I'm nervous about that. And I worry. Um, so, I mean, that's something that we're all trying to be conscious. If you, if you're professional about it, I hope that answered it and we can, you know, we get some everybody's opinions on it as well. Are the coaches okay with that? Okay. Yep. I'm getting the I'll just add that I have three kids and I got into coaching because I wanted a kid to actually listen to me. So I was tired of my own kids just ignoring me. So I, I decided to get into coaching, uh, but I, I've seen it both sides. If it's not written, it's pretty close to written that it, that you couldn't do it because it just gets dicey because like Russ says, even with the coach's best intentions about favoritism about their kid and, and probably going the other direction. It that's never the perception of the outsiders to it that it, it, and it's unfortunate. And so it almost puts the coach at a disadvantage too, because they're, they're never going to be right because they're, they're going to be favor being favorites to their, to their own kids. So I think it's a good rule in a lot of respects for that because it keeps you out of, out of some dicey situations. Question in the chat. Can high schools recruit Russ? Can high schools recruit in your area? Uh, I mean, we can't because, I mean, it's, it's all about where you live. And right. Virginia has rules about if you do move, you're allowed to move. Uh, if your residence changes. Um, and there's certain, one thing, if you establish your residency in Virginia High School League uh, when you're a ninth grader, that's when you, you establish it. And if you, if you switch schools without like a, a proper move of guardianship and residence and all that, you have to, to sit out a year. Um, now, I know some schools, they, they recruit. There's things that people recruiting for other sports. I do know that sometimes club coaches recruit from different high schools. Um, you know, I think it's tough as a high school. Like kids say, oh, man, I'd love to come play for you. Yeah, I, I wish somebody would say that at some point. Um, but the thing is, it's, it's cool, but, like, there's a benefit of being around your friends where you live in your neighborhood. Now, our, our, our communities are getting a lot larger where kids are getting to know each other from other schools. I mean, they communicate more, they're social. Um, we, we don't really recruit, um, but, you know, I try to recruit in the hallways. I try to find a kid. I see him in my, I'm, a, I'm a physical education teacher for my regular job. I see a kid in the gym and let's be honest, high school, sometimes I'm finding kids that aren't, you know, have been coming up as a soccer player, but also I see a kid show something in, in class. If I need a goalkeeper, a kid is rocking it, playing basketball or volleyball in my class. You better believe I'm telling them when we start training um, to get a kid out there. So I, I do recruit, but I recruit out of the hallways in the gym at school. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't recruit in town at the club stuff, but I do recruit in the hallways regularly. I, <laughs> I love it, Russ. Jeff, I'm curious with everything going on with some of the new things I learned about Southern California high school soccer. Are you, do you guys recruit out there? What do you, how does that work? Uh, well, that is an interesting one. So we do, I'm, I assume you guys all have private schools, high schools in your areas as well. And so we all, so it's well known that the private schools do recruit. They bring in the kids and they get scholarships to go to the private school for free when you play athletics. So they definitely recruit um, the public schools in itself. There's, I think, in surrounding areas, there's definitely somewhat of a recruiting because I know we have everyone has inner district transfers where you could transfer from district to district. And so I know we have several that come. We don't recruit, by the way. But we do have several that are from surrounding areas that we know. And it's not because we recruit, it's because the program is well established where they would rather play at the program. So they do have to go into that inter district transfer. And we do have the rules that if they did come from a different school and they were on varsity and they want to come to our school, they can't play varsity. They have to sit out six games to start. And so they have to make that decision. But um, as far as do, High schools recruit 
in Southern California, for sure. I would say definitely. Cool. Last questions, parrots. I'll ask the last question to the, oh, go ahead. I cut someone off, sorry. Sorry, I was just gonna ask you to hit on that third bullet on the rural high school assist with college placement. <laughs> Eric, great minds think alike. A lot of these guys on this call have or are with a college program. So I wanna ask you guys, as a college recruiter, do you go to high school games to recruit? Russ, can I start with you? Uh, in terms of recruiting, it's not like going to a, a high school game to go see who's out there. Now, if there's a kid that we have identified and we know that they're local, we're going to be close by, and that's kind of trying to get that last little bit of, hey, this we want to show that attention. We want to kind of convince you to show you that we're interested. We'll go for that kid, but there's not like if, – if I was going to go to uh, Jeff Cup, um, you know, in the spring, um, and you go and you're kind of looking and there's, and you're casting a big net. There's none of that. There's, I don't know anybody's budget that really allows in a high school game. There's not as, not as many kids, but if there are kids out there, you know, and, and you know about it, if somebody says something, if I'm not there, I can ask somebody who is, and then you kind of identify a kid and start watching, but there's not uh, a, a part of just kind of showing up to a high school game, hoping that you see somebody. Um, usually it's, if that's that last push as you're trying to, to get a, a recruit um, and then maybe you make an appearance or you get to go catch them at a game. And uh, not to say that sometimes you do that and all of a sudden you see a, uh, that hidden gem that nobody knew about that's low on the radar. That does happen, but I don't know many folks that go to games just to see if you can find somebody um, unless they're going, if they're about around for a state tournament, sometimes that might be something, but not, not as a regular season district play type deal. Cool. Thank you, sir. Coach Blodge, you've seen it all, Division One, Division Three, with um, the schools you've been to. How has recruiting changed, and are you going to high school games now? Um, high school, when I first got in the college game at Rutgers, high school was the thing. And um, I mean, we got 90% of our players from high schools. Today, uh, I'd have to say it's probably – 80%, 85% club teams now. Um, but the thing is, in, in Jersey, there, there's so many coaches that are so intertwined. I mean, I don't know what it is about Jersey, but we're connected everywhere. And the soccer circles are very tight. And uh, uh, so if there's a coach has a player, they get the word out. Uh, whether the kids in high school or not. Now, I, I'll tell you, be honest with you, that's one reason I like the ODP program in Jersey because it gives the kids, I mean, th these club teams are expensive. So you got a lot of talent running around the state and a lot of them are, are like uh, ethnic groups and these kids can play. And uh, when they come out for ODP trials, I'm looking at these kids and say, I can't believe these kids aren't getting recruited. And um, it's just because they they don't have the exposure um, or the methods of exposure that some of these other people who are in established high school programs or established club programs, who have the money um, to, to be able to get what they need. Now, I always put the onus on the parents and the kids when it comes to recruiting. Don't expect a, you know, they give these college showcase things and these colleges go get, come to my ID camp and everything else. Well, what happens is somebody's, you go to a, 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 in a lot of cases, you go to a, a club um, tournament and a college will see you and then they'll send you mass out letters saying, listen, we saw at the, at the, we want you to come to our ID camp. It's a way for them to make some money because the camp scene has kind of died after the way it was back like in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. Um, uh, so you got to be careful about that. I always say for the parents and the kids, just start figuring it out. What do you want to be when you grow up? What level do you want to play? What area of the country do you want to live in? Do you want to get away from your parents and go out? If you're on the East Coast, you want to get to the West Coast? Uh, you know, you got to start putting down some parameters. And then 
Yeah, just get the go to the dollar store for Christ's sake and get get a spiral notebook. Put down, uh, uh, you know, a college name and it's split in half. Put the positives and the negatives and put a little weight to each one of those, and do your research and and make it the responsibility of the family to get noticed instead of going to these club thing. Okay, I got to go to this club because they go to all the tournaments. My kids are going to get noticed. Well, maybe they'll get noticed. Maybe they won't. So it's kind of a combination. But if you if you take the responsibility yourselves of doing the process of, of going through the college selection process and do it to your high school guidance people, whether it might be good or not good, I don't know anymore. Um, but there's resources out there to help you make the decision. But it ultimately comes down to not so much them finding you as you finding them. And I think you'll be more successful uh, in finding the right environment. Coach Jeff, I'm going to twist the question real quickly back uh, to you because I want to hear about you have a pretty strong college presence in your high school scene based on your one of your uh, comments earlier. What, How does high school soccer assist with college placement in Southern California based on what you know? Uh, assist with college placement? I mean, I would say one of the bigger assets that you have in the call, in the high school not always, depending on where you are still, but a lot of times the, the high schools do have video equipment because usually the football team usually tapes or live streams all their games. So a lot of times they already have the video equipment and so the, the high school for the soccer teams could use it as well. And, and it's a great time at that point to get footage of you playing, especially as a goalkeeper. You know, the more, more game film that we could get and the more circumstances that we have and put into those categories it's going to be the better that we could create those highlight films so number one just have playing high school soccer and be able to get any type of game film is going to be a plus that you can make into your highlight film to help you get showcased into college because i think you know like like coach was saying you know there's so many id camps or there's so many showcases but i know just being as a college coach you know i don't already know who i'm going to watch if I just went out to one weekend and just watch a showcase, there's so much talent. There's so many teams. I have no clue what I'm watching. Right. So the, the parents, you guys as parents think that, you know, we need to go to these showcases. And if you haven't made the contacts and you haven't had a, a the game film created and you don't have those, those profiles of your, of your child already set up and you haven't sent those out to the college coaches, then it's, you're just, you're just hoping. Right. So if we could use the high school to create that that environment where you're able to make make those those films, it's number one, it's great. Number two, you have a, a high school counselor that's supposed to be making sure that you're on track to go into um, college placement courses. And so we with the help with us as a high school, we make sure that our kids that are college bound and want to go into depending on what what their path is to make sure that they're on on track to make go into those areas where they could they could be NCAA eligible or if they're going to NAIA making sure that they they are eligible as well and so being able to have a advocate I guess you could say for you at the high school level because call the high school I'm sorry the the club coaches could tell you until they're blue in the face they'll be in the college but they're not I can tell you as the club side of my hat I don't have time to to push to get you into college all the time right because I have as a coach, two or three other teams, I'm going everywhere. I hope that I give you the tool to find find the placement there. But in the high school realm, you know, you were, you have people employed as counselors. You have people employed as directors to to make sure they navigate the student athlete to get into college because it's you're in high school. So you use that as your you could use that to your advantage to making sure that everything is you have your P's and Q's situated so that you could even get eligible for college. So it's there's a few things that are a plus to play in the high school soccer that could help with. Obviously, you don't have to be a high school, play soccer to to get into college, but we're just saying it it helps and it helps give, at least give a direction of that counselor as well. Not to be saying that the counselors don't know because I just went through it with my daughter that some of these high school counselors still don't understand how to get the, the kids into college and make sure they have the the right classes needed to get in, especially NCAA. So for one thing, if you guys are a parent out here right now, you guys are, sorry, that 
if you're 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 going into the, these these high schools and the, the counselors are are with your kids trying to making sure that they're they're NCAA eligible, a lot of times they don't even know what that means. Okay, so it's one thing to get in to the the system, the UC system for we have, and the, the Cal State systems like we have, but it's another thing to be NCAA eligible. And so I've seen on the other side of it, kids fall through the cracks because the high school counselors don't know the sports side of it. So it's it's um, it's definitely one of those things that you guys as the parents really need to get educated on that and making sure even to the point of getting the, the money, the cal the grants and the loan, not the loans, but the, the grants and the, and the scholarships that if the, if the counselors are on their understanding how it all works, then they lose out on that money as well. So it's make sure that was my kind of platform on that. That was my college platform coach. Sorry. I've, I've seen too many kids fall through the cracks because the high school counselors don't know how to do that part of their job. So it's very important that you guys are educated as parents. Well said, well said. Parents, a lot of stuff honestly coming back to you. I hope you understand that. And I also hope you understand that what that process entails and how to navigate those processes because that's something that the UGKA can continue to support you with. And we're always looking for future topics here. So if those are interesting, Jeff mentioned a few, Sugar, don't be afraid to send those our way. Coaches, here's an opportunity to give your last 30 second spiel on what you uh, what was reviewed tonight in addition to anything you want to highlight as well as your contact information. So I'm just going to start at the top and work our my, uh, my way down here with you. So Jeff, final words, please. Coach Jeff, you are on mute. There we go. Sorry, yeah. I'll, you know my <laughs> my contacts, Coach. Um, no, I just I was saying that we're here to educate. We're we're here on our time because we love to educate and make sure that everyone has the the fair chance to do what they want to do. And if you guys are on here willing, you're here to get better and to learn more. That that's what we're here for. And so I'm all about if you guys want to email me. If you want to do on the Instagram and, and message me, there's more times and I probably should not say it, but I always do say it, that I have kids sending me their, their highlight videos all the time and I will look at them and I will tell you straight up yes or no and take it to the draw, back to the drawing board or you're on the right track. Just because again, for the goalkeeper, we are the only advocate you guys have. And so it's it's a different piece. So we want I want to definitely make sure I always do as much as I can or I'll send you guys to somebody that can also help. So we're, we are part of this alliance and that's why I even joined the alliance is because of that advocacy. So feel free. There's my information. If you guys need it, want it, ever want to reach out, I'm definitely open. A lot of good stuff on Coach Jeff's Instagram page, everybody. So please, please follow along. Coach Russ. Uh, uh, feel free to reach out if I can help with anything. Like you said, uh, I, I do this to help and make things a little bit better uh, in my little corner uh, right here in Virginia or anywhere else. If anybody wants to reach out, if I can have anything to help at any point. So uh, my email, my cell phone number, uh, feel free to reach out um, and, and whatever I can do to help. This is, is all about kind of trying to make everything a little bit better and hopefully bringing the next group of coaches. Um, you know, the kids have a, a fantastic experience, have a great time with it, and they get to give back the same way we are. So. I love that, man. Ross, I love that. Bring, bring coaches our way and let us help them help you. And I use that line all the time, help us help you. Coach John. Yeah, um, same as Jeff and Russ. You know, um, I, I love talking goalkeeping. I love, uh, I love, the position and I love to share what I know and I love to learn from others. So I'm always open ears and, and love to, to talk to anybody about goalkeeping. Uh, my final thoughts on our topic tonight is, you know, continue to advocate for your, for your child. Um, and, you know, playing time is of essence, especially in the goalkeeper position. So find as many opportunities, as many different challenges and, um, different situations because in the long run that will help their development um so 
you know, if we can find more more opportunities to do that for our, our kids, I think goalkeeping in general will be better off and there, our kids will be uh, in a, in a bit, good spot uh, in the years to come. Coach John, thank you. Coach Blodge, 30 seconds. That's not possible. I know. We Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Okay, listen, first of all, the reason why I joined the Alliance is because of the minds and the experience of all of people from all around the country. And I respect the fact that you parents are on this call because you have an interest in your child and in the position. I think you could do any goalkeeper coach that is involved with your kids a great service by getting them to get involved with the Alliance because of what they can learn from it. Uh, the, the knowledge of coaches that we have is incredible and they can help you with situations like the topic for the evening. And, um, the only thing I want to say about that, just to finish it off is that be honest with your kids. Don't think they're better than they are. You know, if you have a, a very honest appraisal about them and, and the level that they are and, and what the level they can play, then it's going to be much easier for you guys to make decisions together as a parent and child of what you want to do. Lodge the man. I appreciate you guys. For anyone looking to learn more about the United Goalkeeping Alliance, you guys can see the benefits here on the screen. Uh, and I appreciate these coaches. I appreciate y'all being on tonight. Um, my name is Coach Eric Eisenhut. If you ever have questions, comments, things you want to learn more of, information about anything from memberships to how we can help you in your local community, by all means please reach out. Guys, have an awesome weekend. May all your games end in shutouts. And as I joke with my goalkeepers, yet seriously, if they score on you, don't come back. Guys, have an awesome weekend. Thank you again for all your time tonight. Appreciate it.